Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. This is part two for this news report today. I'm going to continue here with Russia and this poll that said fewer Russians like the U.S. but still friends. It went on and says that the absolute majority of respondents, 68%, said the U.S. tended to put, Russia, put pressure on Russia. Just 17% believed the U.S. treats Russia with respect. Well, of course, when you see in the media what they're talking, right, the way they're talking about them, and uh, it's true. Despite Washington's proclaimed democracy building uh, efforts around the globe, which have a strange tendency to rely on the involvement of the U.S. military, Russians are increasingly skeptical of the message. Some 43% of respondents said the U.S. is playing a negative role in the world, while 10% said its role is positive. 67% of Russians said they were uh, the U.S. was hypocritically trying to force other countries to obey international law while itself uh, failing to uphold the same principles. And lastly, he says, despite claims in the Western media and academia that Russia wants to restore, em restore the empire, the polls suggest otherwise. 60% said that Russia and Ukraine should be independent but friendly countries with open borders and without visas or customs. Remember this article I covered why is Putin stockpiling gold? Russia is bulking up on its gold reserves. This follows uh, this article that just came out from the 22nd of this month. 300 fake Perth mint gold bars discovered in Australia's Chinese gold forgery factory uncovered. So remember this exactly a month ago. This story, gold counterfeiting goes viral. 10 tungsten filled gold bars discovered in Manhattan just after uh, a few days of reporting on these gold bars initially being found in the uh, basically a jewelry um, district. I actually blame the Russian a dealer on that but it goes on and says that the investigators were able to purchase 300 chinese source one ounce gold bars for a total of 300 dollars when the investigators melted down the bars all 300 discovered uh, to contain roughly the same gold content as fort knox they say these chinese forgery factories will turn out fake bullion and even australian coins for a fraction of their face value and some of these poor people out there have gone and bought these products thinking they've gotten a bargain or actually being ripped off so the individual from the Perth Mints. Also in gold news, I'm going to be jumping around here back and forth, uh, you know, from the war on terror, liberty, sovereignty, to the economy, and then back to the um, what's going on around the world. South Africa gold mine fires 8,500 striking workers. Remember this, where these guys, there were people actually getting, I think they were getting mowed down, if I remember correctly, at least shot. Uh, it was all over the internet about a month ago. It says 8,500 people who were on strike did not come back, so... They uh, refused to return to work at the East Mine in the city of Johannesburg in South Africa. So it says our hands were forced and we have now done it. So they can't hold off anymore and they're going to just fire them. The important thing to note is the strikes have paralyzed production in the country, gold production, which accounts for around 7% of the global mine products. It says the strikes have damaged South Africa's reputation as an investment destination. But it also says that what? Uh, this happened in August when the striking miners and police left 46 miners dead. And back to Russia. Russia slams U.S. human rights abuses as Congress mulls anti-Russia sanctions. Foreign ministry fires back as Congress continues to debate the imposition of new sanctions on Russia for human rights abuses. The Russia's foreign ministry has fired back today that the U.S. is holding themselves to a different standard, committing many of these same violations they lash other nations for. A war crime, Gaddafi, his son, and over 60 loyalists executed by rebel fire, says the Human Rights Watch. And supposedly, uh, one of Gaddafi's son, sons were uh, killed or assassinated, and also, uh, their, basically, their public, public relations, or their spokesman head of Libya, uh, was also either captured or killed. In Syria, sanctions harming children, sick people, so kind of like Iran, medicine imports grind to a halt under U.S.-EU sanctions. I covered this three or four months ago about the, uh, where they had that one female nun. Uh, well, I guess they're all female nuns, but the, she was a Christian nun, and she was saying how bad it was on the ground there in Syria about the medicines, and they don't have that anymore. So, a report from the Syrian government today noted that the healthcare sector and child care have been the hardest hit segments of the Syrian economy as well as the U.S.-EU sanctions. So CIA chiefs face arrest over horrific evidence of bloody video game sorties by drone pilots. The mail on Sunday uh, reveals shocking new evidence of the full horrific impact of U.S. drone attacks in Pakistan. Well, you don't need them to, uh, to tell you, right? If, you, if you're aware and you follow the news, you know what's going on over there. It's not a shocker. 
But it goes on here and talks about the strikes targets that set out in heartbreaking detail the deaths of teachers, students, and Pakistani policemen. Also describes how bereaved relatives are forced to gather their loved ones' dismembered body parts in the aftermath of the strikes. Now, how about remember the double tap strikes? Strikes when they when the family members go back to help after the first strike, they actually strike them again and kill all of their family members. But you can go in there and check it out. How the attacks unfold. Number one, the U.S. Air Force officer controls the drone from a base in Nevada, so like a video game right there. Then it goes here. Um, the drone makes its way to the target in Pakistan. And it goes on and says the operator picks out the strike using images from the predator. Number four, tribesmen later assess the wreckage caused by a missile attack. So remember this. It said here that um, the report said up to those 881 civilians were killed, including 176 children. Only 41 people who had died had been confirmed high-value terrorist targets. Ex-CIA agent faces jail for exposing torture in agency's secret prisons. So... Ex-CIA agent and major critic of U.S. torturing of terrorist suspects who is charged with leaking classified info has been forced to plead guilty to a single charge in a plea bargain agreement with the government prosecutors. The government will say that any guilty plea is a win, and the defense will say they were forced into a corner, says a legal expert. But it's interesting because, you know, when I read comment boards of articles and stuff like that on Yahoo, I'll see that a lot, most of the people... I mean, I'm not just overgeneralizing. Most of the people will follow this propaganda. Like, you know, when we're talking about anti-Russian stuff, they'll just buy it hook, line, and sinker about human rights atrocities being done by other governments. And yet, when someone like their own people try to come out, like a former CIA or uh, um, like Bradley Manning, to try to, to try to bring these atrocities to light, you know, hey, we're trying to be good people. If you want to, if you want to try to spread quote democracy and peace and and stuff like that, we got to live by it, right? And we're not gonna, we're not gonna do it by, by just having all this collateral damage, and then just sweeping on the rug as if it didn't happen. But most of the commentators will be in there, and they'll just bash, like Bradley Manning. I mean, they have some really nasty stuff to say about the guy, uh, because they'll say, what, oh, you you know, this is, uh, if you don't like this country, you could just get out, and, you know, it's all about national security. So, if you, oh, yeah, and if you joined, if you joined the Army, then you have no right to complain, right? Just real mind mind numbing uh, rationale on the on behalf of the of the slaves. U.S. troops killed four Afghan children who were tending livestock. So, and this is what this is after uh, the recently there was children that were killed in missile attacks, where where NATO said that the raid was aimed at capturing two militants, and NATO would only say that it was aware of the situation, investigating, and later they end up finding that they did. So. And they, I believe they were collecting firewood. So these four children were tending to livestock in the field, and they're going to offer condolence payments for collateral damage because they were caught, remember. If they weren't caught, they wouldn't do anything. Drone war creating more enemies than it destroys. So Obama regime uh, must include the report of the number of suspected militants killed by drones. That is, it would be part of the briefing, but he reportedly uh, doesn't count the casualties. So... And a suspected military, remember that they actually had to define that. It was, what, anyone, like, between the ages of 18 to 40 or something like that, male. But I just covered this uh, subject about drones and how it's making it worse in Yemen uh, because it's actually the, the, the Yemenis over there saying that it's creating uh, a vacuum for al-Qaeda. So, and the regular people, it just ticks them off. U.S. views Mideast as test site for drones and arms, an analyst says. So the director of the Institute for Persian Gulf Affairs says, I think it seems to me that it's not really about achieving a military or security goal. It's more about experiment or using these weapons and technology to improve them, which is true, just like the heat pain ray gun and just like everything else, including training the troops going door to door in Iraq and that, is training them for the United States and civil unrest. Um, LRAD, all these things they, they test over there. Um, exoskeletons and and the uh, high altitude airships I, I i remember reading about that they were trying to uh try to test them in afghanistan but it doesn't really make sense because they're already testing them in the united states so talking about spy blimps so yeah they test and they experiment all these uh new weapons and gadgets and tactics training sessions over in the Middle east so I'm not really under, I, I never really understood what uh, George Bush Sr. meant by his 9-11 speech back in the 90s about uh, New World Order, but he said the law of the jungle, right? 
uh, I don't know if that's talking about common law or just or what, but uh, it says here this is really a situation where it is the law of the jungle and not international law. So they're being accused of the same thing they're supposedly trying to fight. So CIA seeks to expand drone fleet. So they're experimenting. They're making it worse, right? Uh, they're mostly doing it for experimentation, which is why what the CIA seeks to expand the drone fleet. Say officials also. UK to double the number of drones in Afghanistan, so the Royal Air Force makes urgent purchase of five more Reaper drones, which will be the first controlled from a UK base, so everybody can celebrate. So, and historic first, China begins oil extraction in Afghanistan. Surprising, but not shocking. So they're talking about uh, Canada, kind of like in Somalia, where you have these Canadian oil companies coming in there. But it says now, it says a Chinese oil firm, China National Petroleum Corp, has just started oil production in the country, which still has thousands of U.S. troops on the ground. Well, this is supposedly so Afghan can, Afghanistan can look for ways to become financially independent. It says luckily U.S. troops are still in Afghanistan to make sure China can extract Afghans' resources at terms beneficial to China and Afghanistan, if not the United States. And then Zero Hedge goes in there and they kind of talk about what I've covered before as far as Kurdistan, Iraq, and Exxon Oil trying to do a deal with Kurdistan. They were in talks to sell its stake in a contract to develop multi-billion dollar oil project in southern Iraq. The winner, as the insolvent West increasingly seeks to advocate the regional resource control, will once again be China. And I saw this article today, U.S. may soon become world's top oil producer. So it says here the top oil producers, Saudi Arabia, uh, the U.S., Russia, then China, then Canada, Iran, then UAE. I mentioned this a while back a few times. This basically, this is a comment made by one of my family members that was working with the industry as an engineer that the U.S. would strategically use all the Middle East oil first, drain theirs, and then when they got low, then they would start uh, using their own. And that's why we haven't used our own since. Don't know if that's true, but as things escalate and get more heated up over energy and, and geopolitical stuff, uh, it seems like it might be true. Explosion sabotages Turkish pipeline carrying natural gas from Iran. Less than a week ago, the gas began to flow again through a Turkish pipeline carrying Iranian gas following an attack that had disrupted supplies. It says that Turkish officials are once again reporting that saboteurs have bombed the pipe, halting flow of natural gas. It says the Turkish pipeline uh, has already asked Gazprom of Russia to send more gas to cover for the loss of gas coming from Iran, and Gazprom will increase its supply. You remember when I covered this, it was what? The PKK, the Kurdish rebels, claim responsibility for the attacks on the pipeline. And it also ties in with this. U.S. actively helping gas pipeline project to bypass Russia, says Clinton. They want to support a project to weaken the monopoly on gas supplies to Europe, Clinton said. What they want to do is build gas pipelines from the Caspian and Central Asia to Europe. Turkey says they have trust issues with U.S. and intelligence. They have lost much of Turkey's confidence as Turkey thinks the U.S. regime has failed to move against the Kurdish militants. Saying the U.S. military presence in Iraq since the Gulf War has fed the military militant organization. Kind of like how um, the war in Iraq supposedly emboldened Iran. I don't know if that's true either. But just about making the case that, you know, the result is basically the opposite of what they set out to do. Uh, Kurdistan MP, Iraq arms deal with Russia and checks are worrisome. Said mostly because these states did not put conditions on Iraq not to use them against its people or against peaceful nations. Jordanian soldier has been killed in a clash with militants. They say militants. Well, they were Islamic fighters. They were terrorists trying to cross the border uh, into Syria. So there you go. That's who, that's who the West is backing, these people. Remember when I reported about how in the, these uh, refugee camps in Jordan, they were actually protesting and getting violent against the, the authorities there. Also, you have some instability in Jordan as well as far as their regular uh, civilian population. They don't like their government and they want changes. And also you've had exercises and troops there staged there on the Syrian border as far as the U.S. goes. A dead U.S. ambassador documented the creation of Benghazi Terror Emirate. The latest U.S. ambassador, Stevens, documented the transformation of the Benghazi Libya into an uh, overt base of operations for al-Qaeda. Senator John McCain in April of 2011 said, I have met with these brave fighters and they are not al-Qaeda. To the contrary, they are Libyan patriots who want to liberate their nation. We should help them do it. So the Washington Times, an article titled Ambassador Stevens warns of Islamic extremism before Benghazi attack said in a cable from Libya last June, cited the apparent rise of Islamic extremism and spotting of al-Qaeda flag over the building where he and three other Americans were ultimately killed on 9-11.
Please join me in part three of this GGN. Thank you.